These pocks care little for economic or social standing. Poor or rich, young or old, skin pestilences can affect anyone and seem to have a preference for the Dunmer complexion. They range from mild annoyances to destructive infestations that leave disfigurement and even death in their wake. The mortal realm of Mundus is full of wonder. The Daedra of Oblivion would have you believe it is mundane and pathetic, crippled by Lorcan's limitations. But they would be wrong. Magic is abundant on Nern, as Magnus's arcane energy seeps into the atmosphere through the sun and the stars. This luminosity is why we have miracles like restoration magic. Should you devote yourself to learning the art, you can mend broken limbs and seal gaping wounds. Unfortunately though, the wonders of the Elder Scrolls universe cannot erase the reality that the inhabitants of Tamriel remain mortal. We use the word mortal to refer to those born in Mundus, yet the word is inherently somber. It literally means subject to death. The Aedra and the Daedra are eternal, yet the defining quality of a mortal is their inevitable demise. You might have thought my digression into the wonders of magic and healing meant that this would be an optimistic video. Well, I'm afraid to say the topic of today's discussion is hard to deliver in a positive light. For I have the honour of sharing with you guys the grisly details of a horrific disease called the Blight, or Corpus as it is known to the Velofi people. Hey guys, it's Drew here and welcome back to Fudge Muppet. And as we kick off today's video I must say, it's hard not to sympathise with the High Elves here. They blame Lorcan for their mortality, they call him a foul trickster, and yes, Considering the fact that disease is a concept that exists specifically to kill mortals, they have a pretty good case to support their pessimism. In truth, it is the Daedra Lord Periite who so graciously takes credit for the presence of disease on Tamriel, and I've gone into great detail on this underrated prince in a previous video. If you're interested in that, look for a link in the description. To Periite and his followers, disease serves as a means to cleanse the rot from the world, like foul-smelling pus ridding the land of impurities. But to a mortal, lying on their deathbed, about to meet their premature doom, all those sorry souls destined to wander the foothills of Red Mountain, deformed and distended, you can imagine why they might say f Periite, f Lorcan, and f mortality. But with that said, let's get into the lore of this ancient curse. The greatest and most obscure threat is the Blight, a mysterious weather-like phenomenon emanating from the crater of Dagoth Ur, warping and poisoning creatures in its path, and creating diseased horrors that attack travellers and outlying settlements. Natives and outlanders alike must be wary when traversing the Isle of Vardenfell. Naive travellers may see Red Mountain as just another landmark to see, and the ash storms just a slight inconvenience, unavoidable in volcanic regions. But the ash storms are far more than just a source of irritated skin and dry throats. If you are unfortunate enough to contract the blight from the storms, or from another afflicted creature, you'll begin to notice some changes. These changes may seem innocuous at first, but they'll soon prove themselves malignant. The affected individual will become uncharacteristically aggressive, irascible and prone to violence. Depending on the strain, they may notice cancerous growth sprouting up across their body, and then the irritability is exacerbated and turns into violent insanity, deteriorating the mind and making even the most savvy mortal feral. To coincide with the latter stages of mental deterioration, the growths will also spread and weep leaving the afflicted skin as inflamed and craterous as the plains of Molag Amur. Some will see their symptoms progress slowly, others over a matter of days. Some will maintain their mobility and their strength will actually increase, while others see their growth swell up so much that they can barely move. These debilitated individuals are called lame corpus beasts. Many strains of the Blight feature their own unique variations, and each one is equally pleasant. There's the Ash Woe Blight, an acute variation of the disease which meddles with the affected's willpower and thought processes. Then there's the Blackheart Blight, which saps an individual's endurance rapidly, leaving them immobile as they capitulate to the curse. There's the Chanfrax Blight, which cripples the victim's dexterity. While Corpus directly translates from Ald Chimeris to Skin Blight, some sources treat Corpus like a separate form of the Blight altogether. The Nord healer Igfa, working at Vardenfell's Fort Pelagiad, says, Corpus is a rare form of Blight disease. Sometimes Crusaders get it from fighting Corpus monsters inside the ghost fence. We can't cure it. Victims are sent to the Corpusarium beneath Telfir, the tower of the Telvani wizard Dive Fear. 
Victims go mad and the body becomes fat and distorted with unnatural growths. It is always fatal. Whereas Ravosa Ildram, the Redoran healer who wrote the study, Skin Blights by Any Other Name, claims that the Council of Dunma Healers, where healing masters from each house gather to exchange information and work together to deal with plagues and diseases at the behest of the tribunal, have dubbed all skin-related illnesses as corpus, using the ancient Falofi word for skin blight. Either way, there is something about corpus and the blight diseases in general that seems unlike any other ailment found on Tamriel. If you contract a strain of this incurable disease, your only hope of survival lies deep within the Tower of Telfir, in the domain of House Telvani. The tower's owner is a 4,000-year-old Dunmary wizard named Dive Fear. This wise and wizened sorcerer offers an open invitation to all mortals unfortunate enough to carry one of the many forms of the blight, and he studies them in his corpusarium, a series of caverns beneath his mushroom tower. But why after 4,000 years of life would this wizard dedicate his time to researching one of the countless diseases that exists on Tamriel? Well, the name skin blight or corpus may be rather typical for an ailment affecting the skin of its victims, but there's actually much more to it than that. To some, it is better known as the divine disease disease, for its origins are not entirely natural. Dive Fear actually developed a theory that the disease might not be as bad as it seems, and that it is actually a divine blessing that most mortals cannot handle, pointing to the fact that the victims are completely immune to other diseases and don't age. But we'll look more into his research soon, because it's time to talk about the disease's origins. There is one being residing in the heart chamber of Red Mountain who believes Corpus is a crucial step in the evolution of the Dunma race. He believes it will bring unity, immortality, and protection from external influences, like the meddling Imperials for a start. He calls sufferers of Corpus children of his flesh. This same being can commune with afflicted individuals with his dream messages, which the denizens of Morrowind refer to as a soul sickness. Thanks to this, Corpus was more than just a disease. It was also a form of indoctrination. Ravosa Ildram's research also says, like other plagues that ravage the land, corpus maladies have both natural and unnatural origins. Sometimes an alchemical or even magical version of a blight gets loose to devastate the public. The Second Era healer also attempts to find an explanation for the correlation between the Blight and the Dunmer, who are far more susceptible to the disease. He says, As to why the Dunmer intuishment seems to be notoriously susceptible to corpus maladies, well, the best I can offer is theory and conjecture. Some believe that the Dunmer people are ill-favoured by fate, which makes us particularly predisposed to skin blights and other irritations. Others claim that our ruthless and distrustful nature makes our blood run hot, allowing all manner of disease to breed and take root in our bodies. As a healer, I have found no clear proof of such thermal differences between a dark elf or say an orc or a nord. But the true answer may be much clearer, since the rise of the Nerevarine and the events of the Third Era 427, one theory seems to be the most plausible. The Blight was created by Vorin of House Dagoth, the immortal lord of the Forgotten House. Since the death of Indoril Nerevar in the year 700 of the First Era, Dagoth Ur has been tied to Red Mountain and the Heart Chamber. From here he built his armies of corpus beasts. The short history of Morrowind says this about Dagoth and his Ash Blight curse. But most serious are the plagues and diseased hosts produced by the Blightstorm sweeping out of Red Mountain. Vardenfell and all Morrowind have long been menaced by the legendary evils of Dagoth Ur and his Ash Vampire kin dwelling beneath Red Mountain. For centuries the temple has contained this threat within the Ghost Fence, but recently the temple's resources and will have faltered, and the threat from Red Mountain has grown in scale and intensity. If the Ghost Fence should fall, and hosts of blighted monsters were to spill out across Vardenfell's towns and villages, the Empire might have no choice but to evacuate Vardenfell district and abandon it to disease and corruption. With Dagofer's return came the heightened threat of a corpus outbreak. The ash storms of Red Mountain have always been fierce and blustering, a severe hazard to even the most experienced Ashlanders. But the spread of the blight coloured the winds with an ominous crimson hue, as if the volcano spewed vile pestilence from its bowels to plague the landscape. The only thing preventing Morrowind from being completely overrun by the disease is the Great Ghost Fence. The Great Ghost Fence surrounding the Crater of Red Mountain was built with the sole intention of keeping the Blight contained within. The Tribunal used the spirits of deceased Dunmer ancestors to power the fence, and their holy energies make up the impenetrable shield wall. According to the book Ancestors and the Dunmer, this idea was taken from traditional Dunmeri burial customs. The book says, 
It is a family's most solemn duty to make sure their ancestors' remains are interred properly in a city of the dead such as Necrom. Here the spirits draw comfort from one another against the chill of the mortal world. However, as a sign of great honour and sacrifice, an ancestor may grant that part of his remains be retained to serve as part of a ghost fence, protecting the clan's shrine and family precincts. So the concept of a ghost fence on a much smaller scale is nothing new, and a dying dark elf may state in their will that they wish to dedicate their body to their family's fence. The more remains used to make a ghost fence, the more powerful the fence is. So you can imagine how much honour comes to those who donate their remains to the protection of the Isle of Vardenfell and the entire province of Morrowind. The Great Ghost Fence incorporates the bones of many heroes of the temple and of the houses Indril and Redoran who dedicated their spirits to the temple and clan as their surrogate families. The Ghost Fence also contains bones taken from the catacombs of Necrom and the many battlefields of Morrowind. When the Nerevarine clashed with Dagoth Ur in the shadow of the Akulakan and the beating heart of Lorcan, Dagoth was destroyed and with him Red Mountain stopped spreading the blight. The Ash Storms lost their red coloration and it seemed as though the Great Ghost Fence was no longer needed. This was fortunate considering the fact that the eruption of Red Mountain in the fifth year of the Fourth Era likely destroyed the fence completely. But anyway, whether this removed the blight entirely from Tamriel, or if it simply prevented people from contracting the disease isn't exactly clear. But the Nerevarine who was cured of his blight by Dive Fear left Tamriel on an expedition of Akavir, and as of the present day he hasn't been heard from again. When I say he was cured, what I actually mean was Dive Fear discovered a way to remove the negative aspects of Corpus, while maintaining the disease immunity and immortality. And with this discovery the question must be asked, was it truly a good thing to defeat this seemingly terrible plague? I mentioned before that Dive Fear suspected that the Blight might not be a disease, but rather a divine blessing that most mortals couldn't handle. This notion isn't entirely implausible, considering the fact that somehow, despite the harsh symptoms of the disease, many of the cultists devoted to Dagoth Ur, like the Ascended Sleepers, seem to have been afflicted by the curse, only they remain lucid and attain a higher spiritual state. There's no doubt that the severity of the curse varied from individual to individual, with more prominent figures like the Nerevarine and Yagram Bagan managing to keep their wits while those around them transformed into mindless husks. If the deranged, distorted victims of the deadly corpus disease housed in the caverns of the corpusarium can be cured by Dive Fear, as the Nerevarine was, then this disease could be the ultimate gift. Complete immunity to disease, complete immunity to the effects of aging, with no violent insanity and no grotesque defamations. Perhaps there was some method to Dagofer's madness, but it seems we'll never know the truth of his message to the Nerevarine. Ur would claim that he was betrayed all those years ago beneath Red Mountain, and he would also claim that he could cleanse the land of false friends and greedy thieves, paving the way for the children of Veloth to build anew a garden of plenty in the blighted wasteland. No doubt he wished to achieve this in part with his divine disease. For good or for bad, the true nature of Corpus may be lost forever. And there you have it guys, the full story of the mysterious disease called the Blight. I hope you enjoyed the video, thanks so much for watching, I've been Drew and I'll see you in the next one.